and he just he just ruined me. Mm. And it wasn't it wasn't his it wasn't the judgment of God. God is just God, but it was his love that melted my heart. Mm. When I realized he loved me, even though I'd done all those things, that's what drew me to him. Love came down. Just love came down and I couldn't say no. Of your many songs. When he calls your name, you can't say no. Mm -hmm. There's no way I could have said no. I see a beautiful portrait right here as you're sharing this of what you challenged us about when you were here last time. And that was to, to be childlike, not childish, right. but childlike in our yeah. approach to every day. Right. And this seems to be the flavor of your approach to God. Lord, are, God, are you real? And, and mm -hmm. what do I need to do yeah. to get my life where you plan for it to be? Yeah. You're still living in that mental frame, I, I, I try that to. approach? I, you know, pride is, a, pride is a tough thing and we all battle pride. You know, pride wants its own way in the, our human nature. The, the, you know, we have two natures in us. We have the human nature and the God nature. And uh, whichever one we feed wins out, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I try my best. I fall short all the time. I just asked my wife. I'm glad she's not here. <laughs> Lenny, you sang, we bow down. We all we bow down. We all bow down yeah. was uh, uh, the first uh, chorus. Uh, one that I, I'm sure many of you recognize. That, uh, last time you were here, we talked about another chorus that, that mm -hmm. just popped up at the uh, inaugural prayer event for George Bush first round. This one came uh, to your attention. Uh, Ricky Skaggs yeah. was uh, the one who chose to sing it. Tell yeah. us where. I was working one day in my wood shop, and I was had the radio on, and um, ABC News came on, and it said... And today they dedicated the Billy Graham Library in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Then I heard this pristine bluegrass voice come and, over the airwaves and it said, And we all bow down. <laughs> and I knew it was Ricky, you know. And it was such a blessing because that was the only song that they had. For that ceremony. For that ceremony. And I thought, wow, you know, just a, what a great picture. Saints and sinners, losers and winners. Well, we're all going to see his face, and, and I thought about Billy's ministry, and it, it just kind of dovetailed really well with that day, I'm sure, you know. So I was just really blessed and, and felt really honored that they used the song. You're a worship leader at Faith Church in Florence, Alabama. Yes. Uh, some watching, just knowing who you used to hang out with and what you used to be and do, would wonder at the choice that you made to spend your life singing mm -hmm. Jesus songs. Yeah. Well, you know, when I when I discovered the peace of God, that was worth more than any record deal, any amount of money, any amount of fame. Because if you can't lay your head down at night and know where you'd be if you woke up not on this earth and you were in the presence of God, you know, would He say, "Welcome in," or would you be, um, you know, maybe resting on what your good deeds were and hoping they would get you there? Because the Scripture says that, you know. No man comes to me until, except by Jesus. You know, it's by Jesus' blood that, we're, that we have forgiveness and He's our way to God, you know, to reconcile back to God. And, uh, and what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole, <laughs> the whole world, world and, and loses, loses his, his soul. own soul? Yeah, and uh, just things like that, you know. And I, when I discovered the peace of God and forgiveness, man, I could have my sins forgiven mm -hmm. and, and have a clean start, you know. And, and even when I mess up afterwards, God's going to forgive me, you know. You don't mess up because you know He's going to forgive you, but you know if you do, He's there to, to forgive you, you know. And just knowing that He's there to help me through crisis and situation, because when you, situations, when you, when you come to God, doesn't mean everything's going to be great because you're still going to face storms and trials and, you know, tough things happen to, to believers as well. And, but God is there to walk through it with you. And, just having him in my life was worth more. I didn't care if I ever made another record ever again. Mm -hmm. That peace of God just overwhelmed me so much I didn't care about anything else. So my friends thought it was, how did you walk away from that? And it was the easiest thing. In the natural, you'd say, man, you're crazy. And they thought I, I was losing my mind. But I, I just knew God was calling me to something different. Have you had opportunities in these years as a follower of Jesus to share this piece and this message with some of your old pop pals. Oh yes, yes. In fact, people I just, you recorded with. Yeah, in fact, the the fellow that wrote "Falling with Me," Eddie Struzik, 
uh, just recently passed away and I was able to lead him to the Lord in the hospital about a year ago and I got to speak at his funeral. And so a lot of people there. And that's the third funeral that I've had to speak. Uh, I've gotten to, the privilege to speak at it from buddies that, you know, have passed on that were in the music industry. So, you know, every opportunity I get, a lot of times I get opportunities to write songs with, with country songwriters. And I've had a number one song in 96 called Treat Her Right. It's a song I wrote, wrote for my wife and the group Sawyer Brown picked it up and it became a number one, you know. So I get those opportunities to write and to to do uh, songwriter events where there's three or four or five songwriters that have had hits in the industry and I get invited to those and I can share some of my secular hits and then I sing some of my Christian songs and the Holy Spirit touches people. I don't have to say a word. They come up afterwards and they say, you know, what? how can we get your music and where you, you know, who are you? <laughs> but they don't quite know what to say and they don't quite know what it was, but it was the Holy Spirit, you know, just ministering to their hearts. Right yeah, through. just reaching right through the music. It's just amazing. And Lenny, I say this very sincerely. Um, nobody's paying me to promote this. <laughs> uh, it is sweet listening. Um, I'm, I'm holding two of your latest projects. This one's very cool. When I finally found out that it was a CD, uh, pardon me, a DVD and not a DVD. CD, uh, Lenny LeBlanc, Songs from My Living Room. He takes us right into his living room, talks about the genesis of each song, how it came together, and uh, just beautifully performed. And All for Love is the latest CD. Yeah, that's uh, got some edgy stuff on it too. That's pretty rocking in the first part it, of that yeah, one. Yeah, it kicks uh, in a few places there. But there's that James Taylor-ish, yeah. uh, just warm honey feel. And yeah. I can understand all the words, yeah. which means an awful lot. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, I, I think the song you're going to sing, by the way, uh, if you're interested in these, uh, log on to our website, crossroads.ca, and we'll connect you to this guy, because for sure the DVD is not available right. most places. Right. Um, real sweet prize. Um, I think this song, this chorus, could be the title of your story, the one you shared with us. Yeah. You sacrificed all that the world would say needs to be held, worldly success, for a love that changed you. Yeah, turned well, you around. He made a pretty, pretty big sacrifice for me. I'm going to invite you to go to that piano. I'll do it. And Lenny, just a treat to have you with us from oh, Alabama. Blessing to be here. Just uh, wonderful. Some of those songs we've been singing, you're going to, you know, when you're in church and you see at the bottom copyright, you look for this name because it's going to pop up more than you may have been noticing. And I want to invite you to reflect on what you've heard. Um, maybe think for the first time about what the Lord wants to do for you, what he died to bring to your life. Uh, Lenny didn't have a clue what his friend meant when he said, asked him, are you saved? <laughs> but he discovered the truth because he was willing to come with childlike faith and say, God, are, are, are you? Do you exist? If you're there, what is it you want with me, for me? Would you think about that for you right now today?